Hey, what is up, everyone? Welcome to a new episode of The Scary, Strange, and Paranormal Two Tales from Sean, where we talk everything <coughs> from paranormal, ghosts, abandoned buildings, haunted roads, urban legends, local lore, everything. Everything you can think of. Everything goes here. And um, on my last episode, we did not do viewer questions. Of viewer, uh, I always like to add you guys to the show. So I'm going to do that in this episode. We actually got a really good one from a, a good a viewer of mine, a good friend of mine, uh, Rama. Rama Raju. He's got a long one. We're going to read it, okay? So shout out to him. He's got a really good comment on the last couple episodes in the comment section, so he's going to add to the channel here with um, his experience and his comment. I'm going to read it, and then you guys could um, can comment to him, and I'll add my little take to it. And uh, this episode is going to be a, the last episode, if you're following them in order, um, was about Action Park, the uh, famous, notorious uh, amusement park in New Jersey, not far from me. Um, go back and check that one. It's a crazy one. But, yeah, we're going to be talking about dreams in this episode. Now, there's going to be more than one episode because I literally have thousands. So I picked a few to talk about. Um, the more and more that I sit and think, the more come to my head. And it's not necessarily about um, sleep paralysis. I've talked about that separately. This is about dreams. And I'm sure you guys are going to have a lot to weigh in on this episode because everybody, everybody's had dreams, right? Everybody has dreams that they, you know, remember or can talk about. But, you know, sometimes you don't remember your dreams. They say that, you know, you have you dream every night, but it but you don't necessarily remember them because I could go weeks, sometimes months without remembering a dream in the morning. But that doesn't mean you didn't have them. It's just, you know, your memory. I've had it where I could wake up in the morning and not remember a dream. And later on in the day, it comes to me like, oh. Or I vaguely remember a dream. And then as the days go on, bits and pieces of it come back to me. It's very strange. I've had dreams where I've had continuations like if somebody woke me up and I went back to bed or days later, the dream continued in the exact same spot that it left off at. I've had it where I was dreaming and I knew it was a dream. And when I realized I woke up and everybody around me in the dream is looking at me like I'm weird because I'm telling them, dude, I under I this is a dream. And they're like, huh? I've had dreams where I, I guess they call it lucid dreaming, where you could see yourself in bed. I've had dreams where I was at my own funeral wake. I've had dreams where I was, you know, with dead people, with relatives. I've had dreams where I didn't know that they were dead. And I had dreams that I knew they were dead, but I didn't let them know. And then I had dreams that I let them know. And those turned out to some crazy outcomes. And then there's dreams where, like, I know they're dead, but I'm wondering in the dream if I should tell them in fear of what will happen. It, it's very strange when you dream of past and dead people, um, especially those that were close friends and family. Because you don't know what the outcome is of the dream and you don't know if you're going to scare them away. And sometimes I've had it where they didn't know they were dead. Now, listen, I'm not here to tell you is there a connection between dreams and the afterlife. Um, but I'm going to tell you this right now. As far as dead, as far as the dead, 
there's something going on with dreams because there's certain things that they told me and there's certain things that they said that only they would know because I would look certain things up afterward and there was no way that I would know that in a dream. So they must be somewhere, you know, it's like they say that when you dream, your brain is able to 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 know and have powers that it doesn't when you're awake. That certain parts you are always using a certain percentage of our brain. We don't know how to use the other percentage of our brain, except sometimes when we sleep, the other parts kick in, and that could have some kind of you know medium or afterlife kind of communication it you know that's your own that's your own theory belief what you want um but i could tell you this dreams are crazy i mean you'll have dreams that make absolutely no sense you'll have dreams that are silly you'll have dreams that are just dumb but you'll have dreams of of past loved ones and they'll say things and you may not understand them but later on I've had it where dead people told me things in dreams and weeks later it happened or it made sense. Now, what does that tell you? It's like they could also see the future and your dreams are actually able to see the future. It's like I said, a part of your brain that kicks on when you're sleeping. I I don't know. I don't know. Um... I had a very dear friend that, and and trust me, I'm going to have more parts in future episodes about dreams, so whatever I don't get to, because I got thousands. Um, we'll see what we could get through in this episode. But I had a dream of a very dear friend. His name was Jim. We called him Grandpa, but he wasn't. He was a friend. He, had, <laughs> Long story short, he actually was a, um, a carpenter, that we had hired that came here that did a lot of projects or, you know, on our house. He was like the local guy that we would call when we needed stuff done. He became such a dear friend of ours that he became a family member. He would come during the holidays. He would come, you know, and he actually wound up living with other family members of ours, staying with them. He, he was like, we didn't call him a friend. We called him family. And he was from another country. And he used to cook for us. I used to get off the school bus. He used to be at the house cooking. And I would help him with projects. And he was just such a good man. And he died from cancer. My mother to this day claims that she saw him at his funeral get out of the casket and leave and walk out of the off the hill during the burial. To this day, she claims she saw it, like his spirit leaving. Now, I had a dream about him um, a few weeks after he died. He was on a bus, and I was on a bus. It was like a school bus, and I don't know where we were going, but in the dream, he didn't know who I was, but I knew who he was. But I didn't let him know that, and I knew he was dead. So I said to the bus driver, do you know where we're going? And the bus driver looked at me, and she said, please sit back down. So I said, okay. There were other people on the bus, but I didn't know who they were. So there were faces that I never seen, which is another weird thing that your face, you could, your brain can make up faces in a dream, but they say that's not true. There are faces that you may have seen in your life during the day, but you don't remember them, but your brain does. That's a whole other thing. So I was sitting down on the bus, and um, Jim gets up, my buddy Jim, and he walks past me, and he gets off the bus. So I said, well, I'm going to go after him. I want to see where he's going. I couldn't see out the bus. It was foggy. It was all cloudy. Like we were parked in like a big cloud. 
So I was right behind him getting off the bus with him, and the bus driver grabbed me. And she goes, you sit down. And I said, why? That's my friend. I want to go follow him. She goes, you can't get off the bus here. She says, he can, but you're not allowed. She goes, it's not your time yet. Go sit down. So in other words to say, she did not want me following him. She didn't want me to get off the bus. She's like, you don't, in other words to say, you don't want to go where he's going. He's going, but you're not. You're not getting off the bus. You're going to wake up. And I did. And I just thought that was very strange. You know, it's like you're on a, you're on a ride up there and there's certain spot stops and wherever he was going, he was going and I was there to observe, but I wasn't allowed off because I wasn't dead. And that's how I took it. Um, I had an uncle that died very young, my mother's brother. Um, he he was fatally killed on the job um an injury he was a maintenance he was a uh, repair man and he was working for a company and he was on a ladder doing a job on a building and the ladder gave out and he he died he broke his neck he fell well many this is many years later my grandmother had started getting sick before she died she had diabetes dementia a lot of things happened to her. And she had become very ill. She had lost her mind. She didn't know where she was at. She didn't know who any of us were. You know, she was getting very sick. Very sick, very quick. Stopped eating. Her sugar was all out of sorts. She had trouble breathing. And I had a dream of my uncle. So, what, in other words, would have been her son. Because my my mother's brother, my mother's that would have been my mother's mother, my my grandmother. So, so I I had a dream of my uncle. And in the dream, um, I was in the hospital with my grandmother, and she was like she was dying in the dream. She was like on her last breath, and I was crying. And my uncle was behind me in a suit. And I acted, I knew he was dead in the dream, but I, I didn't let him know that I knew. So I figure I'm going to act normal like it's an everyday thing and that it's nothing that he's there. You know what I mean? I'm not going to acknowledge like, oh my God, you're alive. You know what I mean? Like, I'm going to play it cool because I don't want to scare him away. I want to see what he says. So I turned around and I said, hey, Uncle Frank, what's going on? I haven't seen you in a while. And, and by the way, he looked great. He looked like I remember him, like not a day older. Actually, he looked even younger. And I turned around. And I said, hey, Uncle Frank, long time no see. I said, you look great. He goes, thank you. He goes, I feel great. I said, well, that's good. And I turned around. And then I turned back again, and he's still there. And I said, how have you been? And he looked at me. And he said, where I'm from, every day is exactly the same. And then I looked at him, and I woke up. I woke up from the dream. Now, if you look that up, that's a reference from the Bible that that's a reference to heaven. Every day is exactly the same. So to him, nothing's, you know, it's just another day. He's like on an infinite loop. That's how I took it. But I, you know, I didn't know that. Um, and I, it's, it was interesting that he told me that. A very strange, uh, dream. Um, uh, Here's a totally different type of dream. When I lived, I lived everywhere in New Jersey, and I lived in Lincoln Park. It's not a name that's related to the band. It's Lincoln Park, New Jersey, spelt differently. Um, when I lived in Lincoln Park, we lived in a haunted house. 
it, it was a. I didn't like the house. I had horrible memories. The house actually one time lit itself on fire. And I never, I never, ever played in the room there. I hated my bedroom. I just did not like it. I used to hang out on the stairs. And one, I'll never forget this for the rest of my life. One night I had about nine continuational dreams. And I, what I mean is nine because I would wake up. I would go back to bed and go right into the dream again. I tried to wake myself up to get out of the nightmare, and I would get sucked back into it. But it was just nonstop nightmares. Um, and one part of the dream, I was stuck inside of a coffin, and I couldn't get out. But this was all happening in the bedroom. Um, I was being attacked by demons in the house. Um, my parents were dead. Um, the house was on fire. And this was just all night terrible, horrific nightmares. And I, you know, to this day, I just, I, you know, I was like, Ugh. and I had, I had a lot of those nightmares during those years uh, that I lived in that house. And we had later found out that the guy had shot himself in that house. And uh, I get the landowner was like depressed one day or something, and he had marriage problems. Um, and it just the house just had like a creepy vibe. I I didn't like it. Um, you know you could sense those things. Um, I'm trying to think of another dream I had. Oh, so many. A lot of dreams where you're running, but you can't move. Like you're running, but in slow motion. Or you're trying to scream or talk, but you can't. And it's like your mouth is like in slow motion. And you can't let certain things out. They also say that in dreams you can't read text or numbers. That's bullshit. At least for me, I could read perfectly in dreams and remember numbers and text. Um, I can. I'll never forget one time I was walking track during gym class, which we did during high school. We had a big track, oval track. And we used to have early morning gym. And in the dream, I was walking. And it was like, I don't know, it was like early June. We were just about to get out for summer school. For summer. Uh, maybe I was, uh, I don't know, maybe I was, uh, I don't know if I was a senior or if I was a junior, whatever, but I was walking the track and it started snowing. We're in our shorts, you know, running. We were doing drills. And my friend Nick was next to me. I used to bullshit with him about video games and music. He was my buddy. And I said, and I said to him, I said, Nick, it's, it's snowing out. He goes, yeah, no big deal. It's June. I'm like, yeah, it's June. And it's, and then in the dream, I said, and then I said, I, I thought about it like this. I said, oh, shit, I know what's up. And my friend Nick looked at me. This is no lie. And then in the dream, I said to him, this is a dream. We're dreaming right now. And he looked at me and he stared at me. And everybody in the class, everybody in the on the track stopped. And turned around and stared at me. And I woke up from it. I woke up from the dream. It was, it was fucking weird. And when I woke up from the dream, my heart was racing. It's like, as soon as I acknowledged it was a dream, I got kicked out of it. Like, bumped out of the dream. Like, okay, get rid of him. I've had that happen quite a few times. As a matter of fact... Every time that's happened to me, I've got kicked out of the dream. Um, I've had a dream where I was at my own funeral. My parents came home. My mother was crying hysterical, and I was a ghost, and I was observing it. 
And I'm screaming to my mom, Mom, I'm okay, I'm okay. And she didn't see me or hear me because I was dead. And I'm trying to get their attention. And my dad's crying on the couch. My mother's crying hysterical. She goes, I can't believe I was just at my son's funeral. And I'm screaming at them, Mom, Dad, I'm okay. And I went and turned to face them. And my elbow hit a picture of myself that was on the mantle. And I knocked my picture over. And my picture fell and crashed. And my mother and father jumped up. And my mother said, look, look, it's a sign. Look, my, my son. And I said, yeah, it's me. It's me. It's me. And my mother just started crying and crying and crying. And, and then I woke up from it. That was fucking bizarre. That was weird. That was weird shit. Like, that's really how it must be kind of thing. You know what I mean? Like, weird. It's very strange. Um, I'm going to tell you something. I never really told a lot of people this. This is God's honest truth. I have, when, I don't have no more. I think I talked about it on the show once before, but I know I talked about sleep paralysis, which is a whole different thing, but I used to have night terrors. Okay, but, but when I was young, I was probably living in a place he called Randolph. We had a place right on the highway in a place called in New Jersey called Randolph. So this would have been after I lived in Lincoln Park. We had moved to a place called Randolph. And I had a dream that would occur I would say at least once or twice a month. It was an ongoing recurring dream that happened to me maybe for a good three years. Maybe more. I'm kind of fuzzy on that. But it was a dream. This is exactly the loop of the dream. It was exactly the same all the time. I was in a house, abandoned house, like a mansion. And I would go up the stairs. Okay? Now, I don't know this house. I've never been in there. Maybe it exists somewhere. That's another thing I'm going to talk about in a minute. Because your mind makes this shit up. And, and there was a room. And I was always deathly afraid to go past the room in the dream. And in the dream, I would go past the room and there was a dead body in the bed staring out the doorway looking at me. And that was the dream. And the last time I had the dream, I changed and altered the dream. And I didn't look in the bedroom when I walked past it. I looked the other way. And I never had the dream again. Now I'm going to tell you something else. I don't know if they... they talk about deja vu like you like you know you get that feeling where you've been somewhere before or something has happened you know my friend Nick I went to his house for the first time senior year for his senior graduation party never went to his house before never because we went to tech and Tech was all different counties. And he was quite far. He wasn't close. So, you know, I, I, we didn't drive. I didn't drive or nothing. So, I could never get really a ride over there. And his parents were always busy. So, I never was at his house. So, I said, oh, wow. You know, first time I'm going to be at your house. And I'll never forget the first time I walked in the man's house, the kid's house. I knew exactly the inside of the house. I knew what hallway was coming up. I knew where each bedroom was. And my friend even Nick said, and my friend Bill, how the fuck do you know that? And I says, I don't know, but I've been here before. It, I, this, I, I, and I had a weird sensation come over me like, this is so 
like I'm on a loop. Like this has happened over and over and over again. I'll never forget that. And it's happened to me quite a few times in my life with different, you know, I, I mean, with different, you know, instances as far as deja vu. I don't know, that's a weird, that's a weird thing. Not so much a dream, you know, but, but it is a weird thing. Oh, I've had dreams of places, and then I later on in life found them. Oh, yeah. Um... Yeah, I've had a lot of dreams about dead relatives. Where they would sit down with me and talk to me. Have conversations. Sometimes knew that they were passed away. And wanted to have conversations with me. And for the most part, I remember it. Um, and some stuff is fuzzy when I would wake up in the morning. But, you know, I try, you know, in those cases, I really try hard to remember most of it. But it's tough, you know? It's a tough thing. Um, it's a little, it's a little, you know, fuzzy because your I guess your brain only holds so much of that stuff. Sometimes I can remember an entire long dream, and sometimes I can't. Um, I'll have a part two on dreams. I'll be thinking about more for a future episode, okay, guys? Um, let's get on to the comment, and then we'll wrap this, this episode up, okay? Let's get to Arama's comment, okay? I'm going to take my glasses off. Well... All right, maybe I could read it. All right, Rama Raju. Great video, sir. Double thumbs up. Thank you for sharing your thoughts, insights, and experiences about sleep paralysis. Yeah, it was a good episode, right? But at the same time, sorry for your for you. For going through such horrible experiences. Thank you. It's 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 terrifying. It's not no picnic, I'll tell you that much. I am sharing my sleep paralysis experiences that happened about a year ago, but it's quite different. I don't know what it was, dreams or sleep paralysis. Yeah, sometimes you can't really tell. But it was such a horrible experience. I never see demons or anything like that in my sleep paralysis. But one thing I do remember is that whenever my dream, something absolutely horrible happened during it. In my dream that I was on a boat in the ocean, everything went well so far. And all of a sudden, a gigantic tsunami hit. And I felt physically like I was going to die. I felt a gigantic pressure and a freezing sensation on my chest. That's part of it. And I can only move my eyes. That's part of it too. Horrible experience. Then I feel like I can't physically move at all. And I hear a loud sound in my ear. That's part of it too. It lasts about 20 or 30 seconds. Then I jumped out of it and can move again. Thank you so much, sir. Keep up your great work. That's fantastic uh, comment. Excellent comment. Yeah, that's... I know what you're saying by... Because it's not like the typical sleep paralysis that people have with... They, you know, they're in their surroundings, uh, like on their bed, in their bedroom. They can't move. The demon, the black shadow comes in. It stares at them. But I'm going to tell you right now, everything you said is sleep paralysis. The, the, everything from the pressure, the sensation, the, the, the sound in your ear, you can't move, just your eyes. That's the fear, right? The, the, the dread. That's sleep paralysis. There are, different, there are different forms of it because I'll tell you right now, I had one where 
I was laying on my stomach, and I think I was actually laying on my back during it, but for some reason during the sleep paralysis, I was laying on my stomach, and like raccoons or animals were like gnawing at my face. So there are there are different variations and experiences that you can have, but that's that's definitely, I would say, sleep paralysis. It's just a different form of it, which I'm sure there's many different ways to have it. Um, I've just mostly experienced it one way. Um, the one thing that I can tell you, and it seems like you experienced it, the one thing that I could tell you about sleep paralysis as opposed to just a bad dream is the horrible, horrible fear. That pressure and that horrible sensation that something is not right. It feels like death. It feels like death. And it's horrible. Um it, it's just it's a it's a horrible feeling. Rama, I want to thank you so much. That was fantastic. Thank you for adding to the show. Guys, comment on uh for him and and uh, you know what do you think about that comment? What do you more dream, more sleep paralysis, and any comments that you have um that you would like me to share on future episodes. I'd love to hear from you guys. The floor is open to you. Okay? Can't wait to hear from you guys. Take care. Hope to see you on the next episode. Be well. Be safe, everyone.